Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade and this is How to App on iOS. And today we are going to be hanging out with an incredible artist by the name of Mark Trell, a.k.a. Glitch, a.k.a. Dark Love. Oh, yeah. So welcome to the show. But first, we're going to kick off with one of his tracks. This is Dark Nut, and it is Sleuth. Oh, yeah. We shall begin this cinematic adventure as such cinematic adventures invariably begin. We can start with a gumshoe private eye at the bottom of a bottle when it stinks of whiskey and rye, bad bourbon and sin and go-go girls and red lights and pimps Found in downtown, propping up a bar and getting into a row Madam of the night got a room for an hour No hanky-panky, just booze, just a shower Sleuth Back on your trail, get searching for the truth Sleuth so we all rush down his mat and comb his hair, then stuck it in a hat for Dora. Shut the door, gonna shoot, try to dick with a bad man aura. Alcacel says he's a hell of a skeller. Finds his way to the top, then drops, let me tell ya. Cinematic tales of the third man's big sleep torture. He's a private eye, he's a gun for high dip. Got the nose of a bloodhound trick, it's cat and mouse. But he don't know which, she's in disguise. And she's hiding in the glitch. Damn's are in distress. Oh, please, have you seen her now? She's a devil in a dress, she moves like a chess piece queen. She's the best. Then for Tai, smoke a cigarette. Silhouettes, cast shadows through the blinds. Horizontal lines. And a Monochrome mind in a Macintosh jacket, gun shoot by the eye, lost smoke in the packet, hands are shaking now. He's keen for a drink in the 24th hour. No smoking done, no case to build, no proof for the swoop, she's hard to kill. He's looking for the bar, on the bar, on a looking glass. He's got a problem, but he knows that she can make it last. Footprints by the dick that you follow to the past, but the keys runs cold and the sleeves couldn't last. Days living for his mark, living day to day with a bottle in the dark, and he's drinking for his luck, for a proof, for a lead, for the truth, but the girl, he's a sweet got a need. Private dick disease, and they fell off, chased the wildest geese. On a goose chase, too, she slips the neck, she bends. Like Garbo, she's got lots of friends. Red hair and sheep, but let's pretend. Got spies in his camp, and she knows that he spends his time at the bottom of the bottle to the end. Sleuth got a battle with his nemesis again. She bent the truth, Sleuth. She played you like a toy. No proof of a crime, the toy this time. But her move, she's squeaky clean, like a chick make move. Bottom of a bowl, then Sleuth did juice the food. Proud of it, get around and buy the blues. And the bars downtown don't shoot. Don't fire, she broke the rules. He's a broken man, who did never stand so He's a private dick, the king's about to fall. Wake up, Sleuth, shake up the truth. It's a brand new day. Are you predator or prey? Will her seduction lead you astray? Or will you deduce to give up this game you play? The so she plays, it's her game and your game. You play by her rules and she plays her way. And so she continued to lead Sleuth up various garden paths and he searched for her truth. And he never quite watched his step and she laid red herrings and traps and he lost his bearings, his lines of inquiry, his clues and finally his sanity. But she did have one weakness to chase was her vanity. He's a private eye, he's a gun for high dick, got the nose of a bloodhound trick, it's cat and mouse. But he don't know which, he's in the sky, she's hiding in the glitch, damsel in distress. Oh please, have you seen her now? She's a devil in the dress, she moves like a chess piece queen, she's the best. Ben Fatali, smoke a cigarette, Sir. Silhouettes cast shadows through the blinds, horizontal lines in a monochrome mind in a Macintosh jacket, gun shoot by the eye, last smoke in the packet. Sleuth. Good morning and welcome to the show. My name is Jade. I'm glad you could join us. This is How to App on iOS, and that was Sleuth. Yeah, by our special guest today. That was his in one of his inca incarnations, a.k.a.s, also known as 
And that was Dark Nut Sleuth. So everybody, welcome to the show. As I said, I hope you're doing well. Uh, let's do some housekeeping before we get into the show. So down below in the description, if you would like to become a wart warrior, you can now do so. There is a link in there for people who have uh, mobile devices so you can join like that. You just click on the link and you can join for a dollar a month and you can get cool custom emojis like in the chat right now. So if you check your emojis as a member, there is a glitch emoji currently in the chat. Now I can put some in there for you right now. Look at these. How cool are they? <laughs> Wicked stuff. Alrighty. So, uh, yeah. Now I first came across this artist on uh, Rock and Ronnie Ward's show on the uh, Homegrown Indie Live channel. Uh, when he first kicked off his channel, I was uh, I, his original moderator. So I came across Glitch's music here and was like, what the hell, man? Now, this is highly original stuff. It's uh, kind of uh, got this really um, old kind of comic strips kind of video thing going on. Uh, then at the same time, really modern uh, hip hop um, noise. Uh, there's so much going on. There's, there's so much. It's really hard to describe. I think all you can describe his music is as Glitch or Darknut or whatever uh, name he is currently going under. So without further ado, I'd like to bring him on the show. Now, he was already on Ron's show uh, a few weeks ago. And the, th the thing was, I really wanted to dig more into his story. I know uh, what I heard, I wanted to find out more about how this music was made, the stories behind it, because he's got a whole lot of concepts and stuff going on behind this great music and really original. Again, hard to describe. It's just glitch. You know, uh, and I like that. I like artists like that. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's welcome to the show Glitch. Here we go. How are you going, my friend Mark? Hello. How are you? Thank you very much. Uh, a pleasure to be on your show today, Jade. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. It's a, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here and be able to play your music and and share you with the world because you're you, you, as I said, I think you're incredible. You're unique. You stand out, and it's really hard to do that this day and age. How do you think, um, what is it you think that you do that makes you stand out? Um, I think I answered in a similar way on uh, on Rockin' Ron's show, in that I don't come from a family of musicians. I, I, I was brought up with music around me, but there was never any instruments to handle. A lot of my friends that were musicians, they always had instruments to hand sort of thing. Uh, I was actually more into literature and I, I really love writing. And so I took up music at the age of 35. That was when I first picked up a guitar, let alone, you know, doing what I'm doing now, uh, which was about 11 years ago. And I think the background of the writing actually sort of made it quite easy for me to write lyrics and quite complicated and ornate lyrics on top of very basic music at the time. And uh, I think that's it, it kind of stems from there, really, uh, to, to be honest with you. Yeah, that way round. Nice. What I also want to ask is, what I ask everyone who comes on the show, what does music mean to you? Oh, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a tough yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fa fa thanks for the open-ended question there, Jay. <laughs> deep, <Yeah>. deep end. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> well, I mean, it can mean many things, can't it? You know, uh, that's, what it, that's the answer. It, it is that it can mean many things because you've got music for fucking funerals. You know, yep. you've got music take drugs to you've got music to fall in love to you've got music to get pissed to you know you've got all different kinds that suit all, all occasions you can also i think a lot of us like to dip into nostalgia as well nostalgia is like a big one i think um especially with youtube where i can just sort of go oh right yeah i'm gonna listen to gladys knight and the pips now fuck it you know and i can do that <laughs> Um, without having a record player or anything like that, that's quite liberating. So, yeah, it, it means everything, <laughs> which means the answer. It means everything. You know, that sounds quite severe, but, yeah, it means everything to me anyway, you know, massively. Yeah, totally. I, it's, it's, it's a tough one to ask, and it means different things to different people. And, you know, it's it, for myself personally, it, it's uh, got me through good times. It's got me through bad times. In fact, it's created some bad times, and it's created some good times. I agree. It's everything. It's everything and more. I mean, it, everything doesn't even encompass how amazing it is. It's a language yeah. within itself. Um, Absolutely. Do you recall, as a a young dark nut, uh, the music yeah. that was that was being played in your household growing up by your parents? 
and throw throw yeah. out some of that music that you recall yeah. being played and has it has it influenced you in any way yeah yeah well i've got quite a cool first record ever followed by like the most uncool second record ever uh, <laughs> my first ever <laughs> yeah it, it it really is like my, the first ever sort of album that I, I and I I remember like really loving it as well and I, I wanted it. I was about five years old, I think, six years old maybe, and it was uh, Adam and the Ants, Prince Charming. You know, that's a pretty good fucking first Damn record. Damn straight, I think. yeah, yeah, really good first record. Uh, and that was followed up by a cassette tape of Shaking Fucking Stevens. <laughs> so you know, that that were my first two sort of uh, sort of records. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was growing, as I was growing up in the eighties, uh, you know, you're sort of into the, you know, into the charts at first as a child, aren't you? Yeah. So I wasn't really listening to my mum and dad's music until maybe I was a sort of teenager. But during that sort of early earlier period, it'd been like things things I was picking up, like your rhythm mix, for example. I think they're fucking great, you know, from that period. Uh, and Paul Simon's Graceland was just I, I had that on tape. I was only about. 10 years old when that came out. I think there was Call Me Out. I think I liked that it had fucking Chevy Chase in it or whatever. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. Had some money, went down to our price store or whatever we did back then. So, oh, yeah, a bit of Paul Simon. And then fell in love with all the songs on there uh, at an early age. And then by the time I was 11 or 12, I was digging out my mum and dad's records and it had all the standards, uh, which is your Zeppelin, your Cream, your Rolling Stones, you know, all, you know, all, all the standards, the Who. Uh, and and a big one for me was David Bowie. That was probably the biggest one for me. Uh, yeah, Bowie. Wow, I, I actually didn't expect that. I didn't. And you know what? This is. I really shouldn't say that because I didn't. I didn't expect anything because your music's so vast. You have such a vast array of of influences going on. I expected that you would have a vast array of influences to make up your music, because uh, they're, they're, the issue of- an issue influences, of course, um, but I was always a curious fellow. So I've only gone up to about the age of 12 and then all of a sudden, like, you know, grunge kicked off. Uh, and then as I sort of in my late teens, I was uh, mid to late teens. I was, uh, you know, into, into raves, uh, specifically a particular kind of uh, electronic music in the UK, uh, jungle techno, uh, you know, which was basically kind of ragga, ragga, uh, ragga bass lines over sped sp- sp- up hip hop beats. Lots of effects and lots of sub bass, you know, dirty music to uh, to get fucking hammered to. Basically, it was great. Um, so all that sort of stuff just sort of pours in. And then I went travelling in my twenties as well to to uh, India, Southeast Asia, and then other stuff just starts seeping in. And this is all before I was, uh, you know, uh, started picking up the guitar. Even you know, and I was I was always kind of like always on the whereabouts for a bit of music, definitely. Whether it was the blues, whether it was a bit of Indian raga, whether it was reggae whether it was fucking whatever if it sounded good it sounded good yeah well your brother john's chimed in and said mark is my bro i have a memory of mark stealing a doors cd from a local market call the cops (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i I, I think i believe I believe we was in the beautiful town of Bracknell, uh, and, and our dad used to take us there to get our fucking haircuts. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Russ has Russ has yeah. chimed in a proper Essex Essex, Essex boy then. <laughs> no, 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 fucking Jesus Christ! Yeah, and um, I think the film had come out, so I was about fourteen. Val Kilmer. I loved that. So. Film. Uh, yeah, I love that film. I watched it the other with uh, really Mrs. Diamond, actually. Yeah, yeah, we had, we had a good time. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I just saw it at the front of the stall, and I was really intrigued. You know, because I'd read about the doors and that, but I didn't. I, Mum and Dad didn't own any doors, so I'd never listened to it. You didn't have the internet back then, so I just uh, yeah, he turned around, and I fucking <laughs> and it sort of ran off. And then it sort of burns a hole in your sort of pocket. Dad's driving you home, sort of thing. You know, oh fuck, he's gonna find out, sort of. Yeah, I got uh, no, I got away with it, and uh, yeah, played it to death. It was great. Yeah, really influenced by that. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, Thomas Christ has put in the chat. I think Morrison would have approved of that. So I think so too. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I haven't got my tight, disgusting leather trousers on tonight, you know, that I've been wearing for about five years. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people, I, I never thought, because I, I, I grew up listening to a lot of death metal and stuff like that, but I know okay. I, I went through a massive Doors period in my early 20s where I, 
just mm. would listen to his stuff on headphones and on a Walkman, for those of you who are <laughs> young enough to yes. understand what that is. But yeah. I got obsessed with his poetry and reading about all, uh, he, all the fucked up things that he was he apparently did or didn't do and just got obsessed by him. And then, then, then for some reason it all disappeared. Now I love singing his stuff. Uh, he's just so much fun to sing. Yeah, I've, I've done that. I've, I've gone like sort of well into him. And then I thought, after a while, I thought, it's just fucking kitsch. It's a bit embarrassing. And then <laughs> I've gone back to him again. I think he's fucking amazing again. Yeah, I, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, music. Fucking music. Boom. So do you, do you remember the first gig that you ever went to? Yes. What yes, I do. What was that? Oh, my God. Oh, fuck it. It was dreadful. <laughs> it was dreadful. It, it, yeah, it was, uh, it was at Reading, Reading University, and it was, uh, it was a, a band that was big for about two minutes in the UK called EMF, which was meant to apparently have stood for Ecstasy Motherfucker. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was about 15. I was about 15. I thought I was the fucking cock of the block. Do you know what I mean? I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to a gig, ecstasy, motherfucker. Uh, the trouble is, is that they had one song that they played about fucking seven times. They didn't have fucking any music written. They just had to see it, and it was like, oh, we've had a hit. we better start writing some music now. <laughs> yeah, but I loved it at the time. But looking back, it was kind of naff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was my first one. Yeah. Is, that, is that them there? That is them. Yeah, check them out. Mm. <laughs> Look at this the guy. Heart. Look at this guy over here. He's Early hard. He's cool. Yeah. He's hard as fuck, <laughs> this one. <laughs> Look at the sleeves on that. Couldn't find a shirt to fit him properly. Yeah. <laughs> They're like knickerbocker sleeves. So... <laughs> God, look at that. Awesome stuff. I know. I know. I hey, know. Hey man, it's what it's what what we find embarrassing now is what what made us. You know, it's it's important stuff yeah, to to cool. remember that stuff. Yeah, it's about learning shame. I think that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's, um, that's something I need to learn. I'm turning fifty this year. Still got no absolutely. shame whatsoever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> For those watching at home, that don't ever learn shame. Just just ride <laughs> through it. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so at school, like, did you want to make music? Was there? A, did you have the facilities at school, and were you forced to learn the recorder? Uh, never forced to learn a record, recorder. I actually recall that I asked to uh, oh, play wow. the recorder. Nice. At a very, very, at a very, very early age, and then subsequently just left it in my bedroom because I realised that it's a dedication and some kind of like work. Uh, it was be- I was better off playing on my Star Wars toys at that point than playing on the recorder. I like looking at it, you know, but that was about it. So uh, yeah, then I sort of um, uh, no is the answer. Uh, there, there was, there was. What was the other? There was a two second parts of that question, wasn't there? What was that second um, part? One like, was the record up and so, oh, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a music lesson at school, but I mean, you opted. It was three years. Like a primary school, you just sort of played with a triangle on a fucking bongo. Like, there you go, <laughs> hey, cowbells. You know, and that, that was about it. Yeah, um, and recorders, of course, uh, a co- cacophony of uh, infantile kind of just like jangling and and whatever. Uh, you went to secondary school and it just became apparent that there were just sort of kids that just seemed to be gifted. Uh, and they were the ones that were going to take music eventually. And you, you you could opt out of music. I opted out of music after the third year. I didn't, yeah, had no interest in making it or playing it. Uh, I did get a guitar when I was 15, uh, an electric guitar. But again, it, 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 it was exactly the same as the recorder. Uh, exactly the same. <laughs> it, it just looked cool in the fucking corner of my room. Sometimes I would plug it in and pretend that I was Jimmy Page or whatever, uh, or Kurt Cobain. But yeah, I never actually learned anything on it. I actually sold it to a very well-known producer now uh, who, who who lived near us. Uh, I won't name his name, um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, no, yeah, that's my, the first time I picked up an instrument was when I was sort of 35. That, that was the first time. I, I wasn't very well, I was convalescing at home. And uh, my wife bought me a guitar to keep me company. And it, it kind of started there, yeah. Right. So what about writing? Because from yeah. the brief time I saw you on Ron's interview, you, uh, has writing been a thing that you've done your whole life? Have you been interested in writing? Did, were you writing at school, that kind of stuff? 
Mm. Yeah, again, like school has had no, and academia has had no influence on anything that I've ever done. Right, it, I am completely, I'm completely self-taught. Um, yeah. I, I did not, I did not excel at school. I, I think I got a D in English, and that was like a 16-year-old O-level GCSE D. It was, I never turned up in the last year. I was a bit of a naughty boy, really. Well, some of the best um, writers were exactly the same. So you know, they, they, that's... well, I like to think so too. Jay. <laughs> it, it is true. It is true. You know, it's some of the, some no, of the no, best. Yeah, I, know like, mean, yeah. I know when I, I was writing for a magazine like um my actual writing skills sucked but what i was what i was saying was good it was just it looked terrible so that's what editors are for <laughs> yeah yeah sure 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 but i learned to be my own editor as well i suppose because you know i i, I don't really sort of heavily submit it, it, it really is a cathartic experience and it's so, again it links to i think i mentioned nostalgia earlier on in reference to something else uh like music it's the same with me for writing um I I have always done done something ever since I can remember. And if John's in the chat, my brother, he'll attest to that as well. Uh, I was always kind of making things, uh, whether it was board games or po poems or little graphic novels and comics um, and about characters and things like that. So I was always into storytelling. There was always a storytelling sort of element to it. And I think that comes across in my music as well, because there is a, a, de a definite sort of storytelling element to it. I don't think I could do it without that. Oh, so sorry, I just muted myself there for a second. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> it's going so professionally up to that point. It's very good. <laughs> don't worry, it's all downhill from here, trust me. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all a ruse. Um, so I, I want to uh, let's. Uh, I want to get in play a song now. We've we've kind of, kind of covered all this stuff. We'll play a song. We'll come back and say hello to everybody who are here uh, after the song. But let's see. Let's we'll bring up a track now. I'm going to play uh, sci-fi lullabies. Uh, you want to tell yeah. us a little bit about how this was conceived? What's the story? Yeah. And then we'll but then we'll also talk about the concepts behind your music after we play this. Yeah, sure, sure. This is a uh, this is part of the concept, and uh, I, I wrote a series of tracks at the beginning of the year, uh, and of which the sleuth was a part of as well, actually. So this is the second from that collection. It was called the Twenty Fourth Hour. Uh, the reason why I called it the Twenty Four Hour for this collection of songs, one hour of kind of like electro music, uh, was because it was literally the Twenty Fourth Hour of my recorded music. You know, right. the twenty fourth hour batch of songs. So I thought, you know, I think, no, I've, I've kind of done a day's worth of music, and that <laughs> seemed quite kind of cool. So I thought, I'll do this called the twenty four. That's why you see the motifs of the bells and everything in these videos. So, uh, so, but it is part of the uh, of the overall concept, of which we'll talk about later. But if you just look at it as a uh, as a Japanese Gaiden side story, kind of dripped in sort of kind of weird lo fi electro. Uh, and it is a story uh, of the mothership and the lonely child. Uh, but the mothership is kind of like infused this kind of like uh, dream state on the lonely child. And in this version, uh, it's like the Matrix, a glitch in the Matrix is what you say. So in this version of it, the uh, the, the the mothership kind of like uh, sort of imparts onto the lonely child that he is now sort of like on the seas going to some kind of digital Japan to to, to start a new life. Um, so yeah, that's what the uh, the weird, rather weird concept is. Nice. Thank you very much. Lovely. Yeah. All right, let's play this, yeah. uh, folks. Grab a drink, <laughs> chill your beans, relax, and enjoy the tunes. We'll be back really soon, within a few minutes. Thank you. This is Sci-Fi Lullabies. Boom, boom. <laughs> Sci-Fi boy sits upon his mother's knee on her voyage. He's wide-eyed, lo-fi, and he's the sea. And her profile is a silhouette, and he can't quite reach with his little legs. Her lullaby has long been hidden in eastern dreams, in haikus, in gaidens, in midnight gardens at Shinto's gates. In spirit houses, he imitates a sci-fi lullaby last heard in a shrine, sung by ancestors last of the line. This sci-fi lullaby lost in time. This lo-fi child with a hi-fi mind She took his home, he enjoyed the ride He's got no friends, he's left them all behind She can make ends meet with the gift of rhyme They both keep searching for a sci-fi lullaby She keeps on hurting but he's never seen her ever cry He's the apple of his mother's sci-fi eyes And he grapples with the memory of a song that should never die She never cried She never yearned, she never burned with a pride Or a sense of home 
over a desire to bind, she's blind. Sci fi lullaby, good luck to a lonely child. Hidden the jungle, thoughts of the new life. Dot sun, land or hoy, and a sip then shrunk from the birds in sun. Land on the rising sun with mum. Sci fi lullaby, undone, a lonely child. Head got spun. Sci fi lullaby, sung by his mum. Song for new life, more fun, more toys. Tell the boy not along now, run me free. Brand new lullabies made by me for you, my son. Sci fi mind and lo-fi kingdom, sci fi lullaby, run. She's dressed in her best digital kimono. The screens of the tea house cast her shadow into dojos. The sci-fi child felt proud of his glory. His porcelain mum stars and gave him side stories. He found new lullabies in puppy dogs' eyes, kittens' cries, and the chicks that don't fly. Lo-fi boy with a hi-fi mind. A gift from a sensei, sensei and a session one I forgot and left behind. Sci-fi child was due his hope for new ideas to squeeze, to shape and flow. Hi-fi mum with a Wi-Fi boy, she wept like a willow and he swam with the koi. Wishing wills and Shinto spells, the yen she drops and struck a bell. In the 24th hour, a child will be held with all her power. She will call that lullaby and she will tell. And she will teach her lo-fi boy a song to dream from a home unseen. The willows wept to the tea house queen. Silhouettes in the dojo screams. Lonely child with a calm in the stream. Cherry dreams blushed coy about the scene serene. Blossom, forbidden cities, fortresses, and forests. And their new village could only welcome them as tourists. The poorest by blood, the poor kid, the mum. In lullabies she spun. She sprung in the tea house dojo, placed her koto, eastern style to a western tone. Alone, her love for boys, I ain't got a tour, but she smells when she sings of home. Sci fi child got a high five song. Sci fi lullaby, lo fi cold, sun story on the gate. Bitch in the ocean, showed him a home, his mum was queen and sci fi old. Lonely child got save up, load on all that memory stick with a hope. Sci fi boy with a high fi mold. Brand new lullabies take root world. Can you up? Hey, it's a brand new day. Land of the rising sun looks fair, he dreamed of home at night and prayed. Anime shrine finds, animistic maze. Miyazaki house was the price he paid. Me and mum made in a sci fi haze. Brand new lullaby sort in plates. Sci fi boy got a fine new way. Sci fi life on a high fi mind. That's all inside his head. Was spun by a bamboo weave. I sprite and elate. Kumasar and a bandit's plate. The sci fi lullaby tells by Ching. Sci fi child is a high fi king. Lonely boy and a group that brings his high fi mum to the sea. She sings. Sci fi lullaby cold all strings to the north fi child in the sea. He swims. High fi mum on the beach. She jings with an iron swallow. Let's fly to the king. Back home, her geisha eyes were a sin. Low fi child on a high fi mum begin. Sci fi lullabies lost to the past before this tell we spin. The scent of the ocean thought it's sinking in. Back to the beach where Mumchi she to him, her prince, her shogun in Brameen, her king. The scent of sky from the ocean floor she hears, her son sings sci-fi lullabies from the past, she cheers. She now recalls, this is clear as Saki, it's clear. Sci-fi lullabies from the past that rose from the chest like light, dark and the life of a child from jump and luck. High five of a cry, for the void of the life of a sign, no toys but a high five, mighty joy he finds in a sci-fi lullaby. He's the apple of his mother's sci-fi. Sensei Dojo, Vision Commander, Rains and Kota, Shadow Puppets and Silhouettes, Kyoto, Eastern Gatos in this feudal era. Sci fi lullaby, bring good luck. The lo fi boy with his hi fi mum. Make sure they fare well in the land of the digital sun. And may it set on a lifetime well served, finally spun. We bid sayonara to the mother and her son. And their sci fi lullaby from a king. Sci-fi lullabies. Wow. Now, uh, it was clear as Saki that that was wicked. All right. Now, I've had many nights on Saki that weren't so fucking clear. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally. <laughs> it's, it's clear when it goes in, but the head isn't clear afterwards. No, that was absolutely captivating video, and it's part of the magic, I think, of your music. That, that there's so much more than just the beats, and 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 your you know your lyrics are on fire, but your videos are, just really take it to another another level. So I, I find that really incredible. Um, let's say hello to everybody here, and then we'll talk about the concept behind all your music. So hello to Howling Fret Fumbler, Doug Kidder, good day to you, and Sean Chandler, welcome to you. Uh, Russ8889, Scott Borthwick is here, Thomas Christ, Kim Harden-Hudson. Who else do I see? Your brother John is here. 
Um, and Kat, by the way. I've and got Kat, to say that. Hello, Kat. Yeah. Hey, Kat. Yeah, hello, Kat. Kat. Kat's yeah. just joined him, so that's cool. <laughs> thanks thanks both for being here. L'Oreality, Leela's here. Mars Capone, Laura Guerrero. Is that right? How I say uh, Hello, Loza. Yeah, I know yeah. Loza. Yeah. yeah. She's um, a stalwart. Uh, who else do we have? I saw someone else that I've probably missed. Charlie Wood is here as well. Um, you can uh, just, yeah, we'll make it easy. Just type something to me at the bottom of the chat and I'll find you. <laughs> yeah, i got you, Leela. Joe and Barry Glenn are both here as well. Thank you for being here. Thomas Christ, Colin. I think I said. We've got a nice crew here. Yeah, we've got we're 20 people here. They're good, good, good. That's what we want. Because, uh, you know, I remember when uh, I, I saw you on Ron's show at the start and I was a bit disappointed that there weren't too many people at the beginning. And I was like, you know what? Get out and support your original artists, man. Jenny is here as well, too. Um, so that's what, again, I wanted, I wanted to have you on to try and reach a bigger audience, even though I don't really have a big audience myself. <laughs> Whatever. No, um, let's do. We're all, we're all trying at least, though. Damn straight. Damn straight. Yeah, and, that's right. And, yeah. you know, my whole thing, is, I think, I don't know what number interview you are, but you're about 78. So I've interviewed 78 artists from around the world in the last two years. And I just love having artists on and hearing their stories. It, it just blows yeah, my mind. So give us, I want to, oh, hey, Mix Club as well. Mix Club's just late, put in a hello there. So hello to you. Give us, I want to hear this story about, it, 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 does it have an, a beginning and an end of this whole concept? Because it feels like a concept album. I, I want you to just lay it on me so I can wash over it and then we can hear more music. Tell me about this concept yeah. of... Yeah, Duff. sure, sure. The, the concept started um, by accident, as all good concepts do, uh, back in 2016. I decided after I'd done 100 songs, and that was in 2016, I'd done 100 songs and I thought, you know what, that's enough. So I sketched out the lyrics for all those songs. So they was just in rough format. So I put them all into a fancy book and I started drawing pictures around them and I started combining them sort of um, sort of sequentially. So they made some kind of a sense. And uh, the, the kind of MacGuffin that I used for, for this was this mother mothership uh, concept. Yep. There was a character in my music called The, uh, called the Lonely Child. Uh, I already had this Dark Nut moniker. So, uh, and and then I'd just written a song, like, prior to sort of, like, finishing at the 100th song. Uh, I think, like, the 91st song might have been Mothership. Uh, and it, 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 it used a, a sample from Tribe Called Quest, a Aretha Franklin sa sample. It's on my channel. It's quite dope. I like it. Um, and, but that, and it was about an abduction, an alien abduction. And then what I did was I just linked it into this Lonely Child character, and it just sort of grew from there. So the actual um, the actual concept itself is, is literally an alien abduction. This alien takes the form of a ringed planet, rather like Saturn. Um, it, it falls in love with the soul of a child. It falls in love with the soul of a child and abducts it, takes it away. And as it takes it away, it kind of sus suspends it in suspended anim animation, uh, and knocks it out basically, and just starts feeding feeding it dreams. It's fallen in love with its soul, but it doesn't know what the soul is. The the mothership is 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 absolutely enthralled to this 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 kind of being that's uh, that she's keeping alive in her hole as she's spinning around the universe doing her mothership stuff. Um, and between them, they create music. They, you know, she she becomes a, a maternal kind of. Like, it's not uh, the, this alien entity isn't female. It, 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 it's an it. It's, it's not anything. Uh, but it realizes it has to take some kind of maternal kind of figure in this sort of realm because it's still inside a child. It's still within the physiology of a human being, uh, and um, and it, it's trying to find its soul. But it's having the same problem that we all find sometimes in the, in location in our own soul and, and trying to kind of like explain what is the divine spark whether it is just a bunch of neurons and a heart pumping and it's all just what you know what, what your biology teacher tells you or whether it's what your priest tells you or whether it's what your guru <laughs> tells you you know and we all go oh what the fuck is it uh, and in the end it, you, it's up to you to to, to to sort of find that out so yeah. it, it's a really a quest yeah it's, it's a sort of inner quest it, it allows me as a writer to write about an inner quest that any anyone I would hope uh, could could actually relate to. 
So that's the overall concept. In terms of there being a beginning, middle, and an end, of course there bloody well is. I'm a complete <laughs> classicist when it comes to when I'm writing stories. Uh, it's all over the place on my channel, unfortunately. I think what Ron Ron Ward's explanation was great. They're like pages of a book. That, that is really, really sort of that that really is a great explanation for it. But the trouble is the book's been ripped up and fucking broken every time. <laughs> <laughs> It's now up to me just to sort of, sort of gather it all back together and just put it put it into an order. But yeah, there is, there is. And the trouble with it is, if I talk about it too much, it's like inevitably it's going to sort of like get to the end. And I and I and I've got to really keep that as mysterious as possible. You know, no one can know about the fucking end and all the twists and turns that you know because there's so much revealed in the music about the story if you invest time if you invest time in it of course uh but uh yeah yeah but it will run sequentially it, it will have a beginning a middle and an end for sure because it needs to be a page turner and people need to be interested in it and what i'd like it to do is kind of link into the music that i've already done you know as footnotes or or, or, or whatever uh, uh, and also include my own illustrations in there as well. So it's kind of like a real multi-experience. You've got the videos, you've got the music, you've got the, the, the written word, and then you've got kind of graph, graphic novel kind of like sort of style kind of warping into it as well. Uh, and then poetry, uh, a, a style of literature as well, like uh, ergodic uh, literature, which is where you've got to bend sentences into pictures. I like doing that as well. And that kind of is all included into this, this, this overall sort of like huge package of... of mothership stuff yeah oh man i love it like uh, as you were describing it the 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 thing that was going around in my head is this would make a fantastic graphic novel and your music when i see your clips since day one on ron's channel since i've been and then following you on your on your uh, youtube channel you your music does remind me of a graphic novel there's uh, there's a story mm. there isn't a, a, a beginning and end point and and the art that you create is very graphic novel-ish so i uh, yeah. And yeah, I, yeah, there's a sort of influences again, like, you know, sort of tapping into that nostalgia thing. I only started making videos about two years ago, but by that point, I kind of knew what I wanted, you know, I wasn't sort of like finding myself, I fucking found myself, now I might as well just puke it out sort of thing. Um, sort of, so things like 2000 AD, uh, which is a British uh, sort of comic a book that was around in the 80s and 90s, kind of anarchic uh, kind of stuff, I really, really dug that as, as a kid, but I sort of dug all kinds of comics and graphic novels as well. Anything by Frank Miller or, you know, all the usual sort of, yeah. sort of stuff. It's, it's, all, it's all really, really cool. And I like to incorporate that. But there's sci-fi elements, uh, you know, Sleuth, obviously, is the sort of like uh, the film noir. I'm really into film noir as well. But I like anything like that, you know, sort of Japanese Godzilla films, uh, kung fu movies uh, from the 70s, black exploitation, obviously. Uh, yeah, I, I dig anything like that. Yeah, anything that's art house or anything that's sort of different and, and kind of non mainstream, really. Yeah. And it's interesting too, when I saw you on Ron's thing, I, I mean, I'm in the same boat as similar with a project I've been doing for now three years. I've got a graphic movie I've been making around one of my bands as well. So when I was hearing you explain it, I'm like, Oh my God! You, I have this utensils movie called "The Answer Is 42. and um, right. and, and and like there's there's like pre previews of it on my channel, and some people on my Patreon have seen the whole thing as it's going, but it's still not finished. But it's taken three years to make it on all on an iPad, and yeah. people don't realize too that you know this stuff takes a lot of time to put together. It's um yes, when yeah. it's when it's a massive concept and there's this huge story behind it. And it's hard to explain. I, I I know me asking you, hey, Dark Nun, put it in a nutshell what this thing is. It's, <laughs> it's pretty hard to do it because, you know, this is this is many, 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 many hours of thinking and put and putting threads together and making all this tie together. Mm -hmm. You can't just put it together, you just can't explain it in a blurb. It's not enough. No. You know? No, no. It's uh, what I tend to find is with something like this, and I've taken on sort of big creative projects before, but this is definitely the biggest, without a doubt. This is by far the biggest. And what I always tend to find is, is that you do have to have kind of in your head, a, like you say, a beginning, middle, and end, but you need enough freedom. It's not making a tune. You need enough freedom and space in there as well to be able to kind of riff, you know, yeah. Yeah. fucking to, to get to basically get jazz on it, you know, yeah, yeah. because <laughs> you, you've got to leave that in there. Uh, otherwise, it would just be too kind of just in blocks, you know, uh, and that's what you don't want. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it, it takes a hell of a lot of thinking, but um, especially with mobile technology, I can do a lot of it on the fly, which is incredible. 
you know, um, especially with the sort of graphic art stuff. So if I'm sort of like, you know, sitting in the car with my missus and there's a traffic jam, I can just whip it out. I can just do like a couple of hours on there, you know. Mm-hmm. That's that. Ooh, so uh... you can fit it into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like really productive, but really just sort of doing it on the fly on an like hour, hour at lunch, like at work. I'll whip it out, just have a quick, uh, quick go on the animations and that. So you can always kind of squeeze, squeeze it in, and I think that's the beauty of it. Yeah, we we live in the future, don't we, with this mobile technology being able to do that. Yeah. And you know, yeah. years ago, you would have to sit down in front of a desk and and make time yeah, exactly. to do this. And yeah. and now yeah. you can just pull it out on a bus. Oh God, I'm I'm, I'm going down Benny Hill sure. roads hearing you say, "Whip it out, pull it out." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in a Kenny Everett episode. <laughs> Damn, what is happening? <laughs> so, um, uh, so have you written any of this stuff down? So, you know, uh, have you have you got pages and pages of writing for this, or how does this, you know, how do you maintain yeah, yeah. all this kind of story and, and keep going? Is it? Do you write this down on paper? Do you write it down on electronic equipment? How do you keep this under control so the, the um the reference point is always the the initial kind of lyric book that i did which is the framework which which i did back in like 2016 2017 with kind of like um sort of art in there that at the time it's like demo art you know sort of like you know let's have a little sketch of this and just putting the concept together you know like the mothership, a lot of the time, it, like I say, it come, turns up as a maternal figure. But then there's this glitch, and then you just see like her head is like this flipping, you know, fucking ringed planet. You know, it's, it's meant to be freaky. There's something horrific about it. And the and the child who's in like whose subconsciousness is kind of dreaming of of this, like as if it's reality, is kind of repulsed by this character. Um, so, what was the initial question? Because I've just gone on a fucking tangent. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> this is the tangent channel. Uh, just how you keep all this story together. You know, how do you put it yeah, down? Yeah, d- right, yeah. Electronically? Yeah. Paper? <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> that, book was my, uh, that book was my initial framework. So if I, as long as I kind of can work within that framework, then it, it kind of holds in place. And that's why I was talking about freedom before, yeah. you know, putting the, post, putting the posts in. Well, that is a big, that's the start. That's a big definitive point. So is that. So is that. So is that. So it's a roadmap, basically. But then it's how you fill in that 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 roadmap, and and that's actually the most difficult bit. That is the most difficult bit. But the songs are actually in collections on the on the YouTube channel, and that kind of follows it sequentially ish. Um, so that's kind of like a notepad for me as well. So I've always got the music there to refer to, so I can cross refer. I can cross reference as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's also I'm I'm quite excited about taking it on because it, all it is is just going to be this huge reordering for me, and 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 I like doing stuff like that because I can be a bit square like that. Uh, so I'm going to sort of reorder it, and then I'm just going to put it into the order that I have in my head as well. To be honest with you, I've got so many scenes now, uh, but I have sketched out the the first I think five thousand words, like that, you, you know, just as it leads in. But this is going to be a, a, quite a large book. I mean, I'm talking like probably 200, 250,000 words. It's, it's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah, proper. Have you considered putting together a website for all this stuff? Because I think this would really benefit yeah. where you're heading. Like, um, you know, yeah, YouTube's definitely. really that's, restrictive. That's you can, thing. Yeah, you can yeah. only create playlists yeah. on a YouTube where a website, right. you can yeah. design it yourself. You can make it look the way you're, you're in your head. I'm, I'm exactly really looking that. forward to that yeah. kind of stuff. Let's play. Yeah, let, yeah, let, let, let's play another song. Uh, you want to tell us oh, a little about uh, a little bit about uh, this one? This is a glitch track uh, called "We're Prisoners." Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, uh, "We're Prisoners" is actually uh, this recording was I think last year or maybe the year before. I I, I can't quite recall, uh, but it's actually the first ever purposely kind of written song that I ever wrote uh, back in twenty eleven, I believe. Um, and I sort of repurposed a lot because I always found my writing was stronger than my music at the time, obviously. So uh, as my music was sort of catching up, <clears throat> I thought, well, I can go back to my old stuff and just kind of re- re-record it. So this is one of those. And instead of there being kind of beats on there, because, you know, there's, there's a lot of beats in my music. I, I, there is no beat at all. There's no drum percussion in there whatsoever. So it's an acoustic guitar. It's, 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 quite, it's quite pure. There's other, other, other kind of sounds 
going on in there. And it is a uh, Cairo Jones track. Cairo Jones is the beating heart of the lonely child. That yeah, uh, and it is about being kind of imprisoned by the mothership. Really, the, the track. That's how I kind of repurposed it. And uh, yeah, so this is we're prisoners. Awesome. Let's do it. All right, guys, we'll see you back in a few minutes. This is We Are Prisoners. Boom. Boom.
We are, man. We are prisoners. And it's going to lead me, lead me into a segue here. But first, I just want to touch on this. Thanks, Thomas Christ, who's put a link in here to subscribe to Glitch if you haven't already. There are links down in the description. So uh, there's all those down there. <clears throat> you know, that song, your guitar playing too, you spe specifically your songs where you play guitar, remind me very much of uh, the early uh, the early John Frischianti stuff when he left the Red Hot Chili Peppers and he was... I don't know if you've heard of his stuff. Uh, he's got this album that is incredible. I know who he is. It's, I've never listened to his solo stuff, oh, I must confess. Oh, yeah. man. Grab his first album. It's called Neandra and her T-shirt or something. It's got a real crazy long name. And it's just, I actually have a pen here. So <laughs> I am, um, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, it's just, Nea <laughs> if you remember Neandra, N-I-A-N-D-R-A, -A, John Frischianti. Um, It was just him after he left the band and he just shot up a fuckload of heroin and just laid around just with a with a with a, with a, with a four track just recording whatever was going on in his head. With a four track. And yeah, and it's it's fucking going basic. It's so like haunting and there's all these reverse guitars and it, it's so it's so yeah, painful, yeah, man. Yeah. <clears throat> like, but it's so real. And that's what I'm mm. saying. That's the comparison. It's very real stuff when you play wow, acoustic man. guitar. Uh so yeah, um yeah. So uh, talking about being prisoners, uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the uh, C word, COVID, because we all got locked down and we became more of prisoners. Great, than... <laughs> great, great. <sake. laughs> I'm a pro, mate. <laughs> but, but yeah, we literally did become prisoners for, you know, a year and a half. <laughs> um, how did you cope? During this time, because I mean, I'll just say, and I've said this many times when I ask this question, for me, it was like, I, I blossomed during that time, but, and I felt incredibly guilty because I know people were dying and people were losing their jobs and all this shit. But for me, I just exploded. I felt, and I know there's a lot of creative people out there who did feel like, oh my God, I have the time to fucking breathe. So, you know, how, how did you deal with all that kind of, prisoner time yeah yeah see i'm um i'm kind of like um i'm i'm naturally by inclination a little bit of a hermit my brother john <laughs> in the chat will attest to this as well uh it, you know he, he would come knocking on my door when i was a kid and already in my room i'd have like star wars toys my teddy bear might be a giant it's about to eat him or whatever and there was stories going on yeah they'd be knocking on my door but, go away go away john <laughs> So, uh, so I'm sort of naturally inclined to be indoors, although I like travelling. I am a, I am, I'm a complex man. Uh, I think we're all bloody complex, to be honest with you. But that's one of my complexities. Yeah, uh, I'm social and I'm antisocial all at the same fucking time. It's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I, it didn't bother me. What bothered me was was obviously just the sort of the threat of like losing my job at the time. Yeah, you know because everything became unsure. I've got a mortgage to pay. This is, you know, my house. Yep. Uh, I'm still looking after two sort of teenage kids, um, you know, and it's all sort of that existential kind of thing was in there. And, hey, what did I do? Fucking made shit loads of music and learned how to make videos. It's exactly as you just said it was. Um, there's a really great kind of quote, and I can't remember who, who it was. It might be someone from Black Sabbath or it might be someone else, and I can't quite recall who it is about like living in the UK. If someone asked them sort of, how come there's so, so much creativity did come out of the UK at that time, you know, uh, that sort of sort of 20th century era. Uh, so, cause, era, because the UK was never really known for music before that. Like, we were fucking shit, you know, <laughs> Germans and the Austrians and the fucking Americans had jazz and blues and we were fucking, you know, it was rubbish. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, it's like, what happened? And I think like technology was the first thing, obviously, but also, this fucking miserable island is cold and wet a lot of the time. So you, you're just forced to stay indoors, yeah. essentially. Although you've had so, a good summer. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to climate change, we're in the fucking orange yeah. zone. Yeah, well, yeah. Welcome yeah. to Australia's yeah. weather, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah, I've got a bit of a tan on and that. It's, uh, it, it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad summer, I suppose. I don't really want to talk about climate change because it, it just, we don't want to talk about COVID, then climate change. What, what next? <laughs> Putin, fucking, this is not the time and place no. for that, man. That's not the time and place for that. Anyway, the mothership, mothership shits that fucking shit, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, 
Yeah, with COVID though, it did allow me to to, to take time to get better at guitar uh, yeah. as well. I just because yeah. there's so many micro skills involved in kind of creating. You know, I've got the writing bit down pat. I've been doing that for years. But sort of like um, sort of musical ability, I don't sort of like you know I, I started late, so it's like I've always been playing catch up, and so that means I can always get better and I can always surprise myself, which is always great. Um, so in that time, I, I did spend a hell of a lot of time like practicing the guitar, yeah, because I'm not a natural guitar player. Uh, I just fucking like doing it, yeah. So yeah, lots of that, lots of uh, lots of creating. But my missus was there was a bit of guilt because my missus was. Um, uh, she was working in care, so right. she, she she actually yeah she was actually doing the real shit. So uh, so I had to make sure that there was you know food on the table and that she was all right and everything. It wasn't just like sort of a a, a fog of creativity, man. You know there was you know, but I was getting paid and then and then when I went back, that was like fucking hell, man. It was really quite difficult it was difficult to get back into the swing of the routine of just like you know giving yourself up for the you know for the pound because i need to pay for this yeah, you know totally. so you go from an, yeah you go from an existential crisis thinking i'm gonna fucking lose it all and then as soon as you get back into the race again you're like oh fucking i really miss how it was <laughs> 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 you know what i mean it's just like yeah 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 but uh i think I, i'm a great believer in though like you know uh i, I work in telecoms i, I don't mind it uh, you know, it, it doesn't offend me, um, but I need to kind of have that kind of like sort of almost dull kind of routine day to day in order to then experience the full color of, of, of creativity. Because I think if you if you if there's too much creativity, man, I, I've had it, it, it. Something really strange happens to your head. You you've got to be able to pull yourself out of it, man. Yeah. It's uh, and it's very it's very intoxicating. It can be, yeah. For sure, and it did become intoxicating in that period. For me, it did anyway because I'm, I love creating. Oh, I just could do it all the fucking time. Yeah, so uh, it's something I'm, I'm sort of aware of, though. Yeah, yeah. I talk about it on this show all the time. Uh, like, like you, you've got to take a break from it and then do other things yeah. that stimulate your brain, so you can yeah. keep that creativity going too, and 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 expand yeah. it. Like you can fall yeah, yeah, if absolutely. you're not if you're not taking in other things. You know what I'm saying? Then, yeah. then you, you yeah, tend yeah. to go down one path, and and you don't want to. You want to be like Led Zeppelin, have that option to, because there are two paths you can go by. You know, it definitely yeah, is yeah. the way Always to go. Always a fork in the road. Man. Always a fork in the road. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned your kids, and I like to pull on threads when somebody says something. What do they think of your okay. music? Uh, do you know what? They're always really cold to it because it's quite embarrassing for a <laughs> middle-aged man to start fucking rapping, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's like, hey, kids, guess what I'm doing today? <laughs> what, Dad? I'm a rapper. You know, and it's like, oh, <laughs> fuck you. Christ. You know, like, please, Dad, please don't do this to me. Uh, but um, they, they've come round to it, actually. Um, I'm really I'm really keen. There's a, there's a track I've got, and and, I, and they quite like it. They actually said, oh, that's pretty dope. And I was like, oh, damn, really keen. That's quite cool. And I said, well, because they can rap. That's the thing. Yeah. They've inherited the dark nut seed. Yeah, you see. So they can rap. <laughs> so I was like, why don't we all do a, a one together as a crew? like, And we'll call it, check this, Sons of Dark Nut. I mean, fuck it. It's a great oh, idea. Oh, fuck yes. Sons of... Yeah. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's a real tough track as well. So I think watch this space. That might happen. Yeah, yeah. So they've come around. And my missus has come around as well. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. She likes my rock and rolling stuff more, I think. Uh, but my kids like my rapping stuff more. But there's something for everyone, you see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> yeah. You, you're doing something right when you can embarrass your kids, I reckon. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That is my fucking right, my prerogative. It's the only thing I enjoy these days, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Absolutely, man. You know, the, the, we we bring them up and stuff, and so you, they've got to have some kind of payback. And embarrassment is that, I believe. Yes, we go back to shame again. It's yeah, coming, like running shame. To, uh, back to shame. Oh, <laughs> next, next, we're going to go down a whole Catholic church kind of thing. Oh God, where am I going oh. now? <laughs> so, uh, John's put down here. Don't leave me out, bro. <laughs> I'll never leave you out, bro. Whew, honestly. honestly. Hey, what's going on, uh, Lily Pillies and Pete Johns? Thanks for joining us. Hi. Glad to have yeah. you here. Yeah, man. 
So uh, where are we? I want to I want to uh, delve into what goes into the concept of of how, how do you put together these videos? Do you storyboard mm. these videos, or like is there a a uh, process where do you collect do you collect images and just store them away and then and then try and put them together how do you go about coming up with the ideas and then starting to lay out mm. that that concept yeah i mean like um sometimes the concept is ready ready made in your head uh, yeah. sometimes you have to work work at it sometimes a song evokes in me something immediately and it's like that's a fucking dark nut track and mug ships getting it or the other way around um uh, and sometimes i kind of i think right yeah this is this is something a bit different um but you're absolutely right in terms of like i mean there's many different methods i use so it's almost like akin to like Ardman animations do you know like sort of like uh sort of like the plasticine wallace and gromit thing yeah yeah you, absolutely. Or, or, like, or like a flick or like a flick book that's one style that i do now that's really time consuming um because that literally is you just you download an image and then you just manipulate it and you just make it sort of move, you know, like sort of things walking like that. But, um, and, but then I use sort of other, I, I, I use a, a multiple app kind of uh, way of doing it. So I will use the basic apps on an Android phone to download the image first of all and then you can just obviously go into photo or something like that to crop it. Uh, but then I use other filters. So for the comic book effect is one called Comica. I mean, it's an Android app and uh, it's free of charge. And that gives me that nice monochrome. I like that monochromatic kind of look. I, I just always have. It's just it's clean. It's uh, uh, it's not too heavy on the uh, on the pixels either. So uh, you always get a nice crisp crisp kind of image on on YouTube and when you upload. And that's a, that's a pretty good tip uh, if you like in, into sort of like the graphic novel style of, of the video. Um, and but yeah, I, I use plenty of other kind of overlays and things as well. Um, it's not just like say one app, it's like sort of multiple apps. Another one's called V2, another one's called V2 on Android. That's a really, really nice one as well. Uh, that one just has just sort of some, some crazy kind of fucking filters in there for videos, and um, and yeah, yeah, so that's how I, that's how I kind of do it in terms of storyboard. No, it's just in my big fucking fat head, uh, it just <laughs> is. I just sort of pick the images, put them in order, string them out, and go, Oh, that looks all right, and then upload it. It literally is like that. And then my wife will go, Oh, Mark T's ready, and I go, All right, darling, and yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, I work very quickly in my head now because I think it's, I've been doing sort of like telling stories for so long i think you know it's like um i don't have to sit there and like r ruminate and like oh no what's the what's the motive all this crap you know i just just fucking write it man you know and i just, just sort of do it i've just very definitive in what i want yeah yeah because when when i saw you on run show i was like wow it seems like a lot of processes that you go through to put all these things together because you you're sending to, from one thing to another thing to another thing yeah, uh, yeah yeah yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely, exactly that. Yeah. So you just sort of sort of waiting a long time for things to be processed as well. On it, you know, it's a powerful phone, but it's a fucking phone nonetheless. You know, yeah. um, some of this stuff is quite powerful. You know, we've got these fucking great big supercomputers in our pockets, and I want to fucking use it. I think that that's what it comes down to as well. If I'm spending money on a phone, I'm gonna fucking you know, I'm not gonna text people. <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm gonna make a fucking badass video. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, another one I do is, is I'll just take videos like uh, live off of a, a big screen or whatever, and I'll just record it onto the camera, and then I'll crop it, and then I can just do what the fuck I want with it, you know? I can cut it, loop it, reverse it, speed it up, slow it down. You could have Benny Hill, you know? Slow it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would be good. So, and and with with your music making, uh, is there a specific uh, formula that you go through? Like, how does a song start? Like, say you're doing something mm. with a beat in it. How do, how do you start with that? Where do your beats come from? Be beats come from such a variety of places, such a variety of places. You can find, like, unlicensed beats so in so many places as well. I mean, so many. Uh, my favourite method this year has been, uh, has been using um, drummers on YouTube who have training videos. Right, and I'll give a shout out to a guy here called Guitar Maps. Guitar Maps on YouTube is a really good one, and he will let you. And he does kind of like metal drums, hard rock drums, and I've been I've made three sort of uh, hard rock music collections this year, kind of sort of blues orientated, um, which are like kind of Cairo Jones records, really. 
and um and i use i use a lot of his stuff on there because he's so accommodating you know and i just sort of go over to there and i say hey man i really fucking dig this and he'll go yeah no problem the only thing he asks you to do is just like post the link of his stuff on your in your comments um which is great so you've got this whole community of people out there that are willing to just kind of like you know just say yeah no problem because I'm not making any money off of it and he's not making any money off of it, it doesn't really matter. You just sort of go, okay, it, what's the worst that can fucking happen? You know, mm-hmm. someone might like it. it. That's the one. Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Really, 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 really great website. Really great website. Uh, so much on there. And um, so, yeah, I've, uh, I've I've taken a few stuff off of there. Not everything, but um, when I hear something off of there, I go, yeah, that's, I really like that. And uh, so the process would start with something like that. And then I'll just jazz it. I, honestly, most of the time, I just go, it depends on how I feel on any given day as well. You know, it's, it, it's like, you know, if I'm going to sort of like sit with my guitar with this beat and I'm pissed off, it's going to be a fucking a hard track. If I'm in a really, really good mood, I've had a good day at work or my football team's won or whatever, I'm going to make something a little bit more, you know, funkier maybe, you know, a little bit more bouncier. It, it really does depend on, on, on the actual mood. Um, but I do jazz it very much so. But I also sort of like try and make sure that the, the rules are applied because otherwise, you know, you want to make it listenable, of course. <laughs> you know, otherwise you can't just sort of like go on this kind of odyssey. Well, you can if you want. But, you know, I, I do want it to have structure. But the structure comes from, well, first of all, the drum beat that I've downloaded, because that's already given me the fucking structure. You know, that yeah. is the structure. That's yeah. the, that is the initial structure. So the next structure is the, is, is bass. Uh, and then you plot the bass on. And then from there, the process I find just gets quicker and quicker and quicker until you get to the lyrics. Uh, and some songs I, I write lyrics in within, within 30 minutes. Uh, and there have been tunes that I've spent hours on, absolutely fucking hours on. Uh, yeah, especially a lot of the sort of more ornate sort of hip hop rap uh, tunes that go on for five minutes. It's a lot of writing, a hell of a lot of writing. But uh, that's the challenge. And I, I like it. Yeah. Would you describe yourself as uh, when you're putting together music as a, a bit obsessive, compulsive? Uh, do you do, do you really you know? Get get into it. And... Yeah, to a degree, absolutely. You don't put out as much stuff as I do without being a bit obsessive about it. I think the, I think, I think I almost came out of it, and then I, this mothership concept come up, and it uh, she it's her fault. It's her fucking <laughs> fault. And all of a sudden, I have become obsessive compulsive because there's no end to it. It's kind of almost endless. You know, it's kind of like this endless framework that I can just keep on fucking. Just, shoving like sort of more side stories into you know so i will cut away the bloke but um i think i'm aware of that as well and i think like in my life i do have a family and i do have a job uh, which i take seriously because i've got a fucking house i've got to take it seriously i'm a fucking yeah, grown man right. yeah, yeah. I, I can't be a fucking 19 year old fucking bohemian fucking wannabe rock and roll star and that fucking that bird has flown you know so i'm a i'm a responsible adult and uh, and and that keeps me grounded. That, that and my, my sons play football, and I like going to watch the love. I love going to watch them play football at the weekend. It's one of my big joys in life, and that keeps me grounded. There are other things apart from music, um, but yeah, yeah, it can get that way, especially during lockdown. That was fucking mental. Yeah, really obsessive, ma- massively. I came off Facebook and everything. It was like, ah, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. And then I sort of slowly crept my way back, sort of thing. But this time I'm doing it differently. You know that kind of vibe. So I want to know a little bit about the whole uh, glitch name and the names that you have in Dark Nut, because I mean, mm-hmm. and it's another reason I wanted to have you on here because before I. See, we're pulling back the curtain today because before I, you know, got to hear more about who you are, I didn't even know your name was Mark and all this stuff. This glitch, the and dark nut, it was is kind of like an enigma kind of thing. And now I'm finding out mm. you just like going to the, watch your son play football. So it's it's kind of yeah, pulling, yeah, pulling yeah. back the curtain a bit. So where did these names yeah, come yeah. from? What and, and these identities Whoa. that you've created. Yeah, yeah. The, the first one that came about was the lonely. No, no. F- the first one that came about was Dark Nut. Dark Nut was the very first one. I had um, made a my first hip hop tune uh, called Rendered Basic back in like oh god, what was it, twenty twelve? And I used a, a a leather chair 
and a cigarette tin and a biro for the drum beat, nice. basically. And for scratching, I had a notepad and I was just scribbling, d- doing things like that. Uh, so I wrote this kind of philosophical rap. It's my first ever rap. And um, yeah, yeah. What was the question again? I'm, I'm rambling again. I think I'm tired, but please <laughs> don't, don't remind me. Where your names came from. <laughs> names, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that was my first hip hop tune. I realised that I needed, like, if you listen to hip hop, you always need a suit. They always have a, a handle. An, an MC handle, a pseudonym. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was actually a reworking of Rendered Basic that I did uh, a couple of years ago. So that was actually a remix of uh, of Rendered Basic with a, f- a funky bass line. Um, so, yeah, that's where Dark Knight came from. And actually, Dark, what Dark Knight is, is a character in the Legend of Zelda video game series. Oh, really? That, I, did, yeah. I didn't yeah. even know it's that. It's like a mid-level, mid-level baddie. Me and my wife used to play video games together and we used to play zelda together so every time we went in one of these dungeons in zelda halfway through the dungeon this big fucking black knight would come and face you and uh his name was dark knight and because i've got like dark hair or it's getting grayer now but i've got dark hair uh and it's on me nut on me head <laughs> um my wife just started calling me dark knight so uh, when i started rapping i was like i need a rapping name and just dark knight just add a natural fit because there's so much you can rhyme with it there's so much you can fuck about with it Shit, yeah. uh, and, and it kind of fit so that's where dark knight came from but dark knight evolved dark knight evolved into this other character uh dark knight is actually the uh, the lonely child we've talked talked about the abducted child dark knight lies within his subconscious so he the dark knight is the angel and the demon he is your your morality he's your good and bad he's yeah uh, he's, he's the the whisperer in there saying, do that fucking bad thing. And the other one going, no, no, no. You know where you're going. Do not do that. <laughs> Dark Knight is a merge and a pact to protect like white blood cells in, in, in the body. There's something invading this and they don't know what it is because the mothership's tricking it as well. So they make this merge and pact come something that is ambiguous. Something that is not good, not bad. It's ambiguous. And that it comes in the form, first of all, as a gumshoe kind of detective, like a Sam Spade kind of uh character from a raymond chandler novel something like that you know hot girl walks into office it's the mothership's sending him another fucking mission to get him killed again but he can't die because he's in the lonely child and she needs a lonely child alive in order to find the soul so there's this game now being played so uh yeah that's how dark, what dark Knight actually evolved into glitch itself well the lonely child's living in this glitch you know it's like a matrix it's yep. the glitch it's in the glitch um uh yes yeah, so, and cairo jones is the child's beating heart his beating heart is represented uh as cairo jones he's kind of like this tragic kind of rock musician who wanders a, a barren desert of his lonely heart with a guitar strapped to his back like playing songs and making up that he's got a pretend family yeah <laughs> nice reminds me of uh of red dead redemption <laughs> Oh, right. I've never played that, but there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's a good game. Um, I'm going to play another song. This is MS8, The Elemental Five. Do you want to tell us a bit about this? Moon's mm. Tide. What's what's behind yeah. this before we play it? Yeah, um, this one is uh, MS8 is Mothership Part 8. I, I kind of uh, put the, the sum of the Mothership's framework into uh, into 10 songs, which is, uh, which is on a collection on my YouTube channel, and this is like Part 8 of that. Um, and Elemental Five is basically the mothership has been tampering with this child for so long it's like almost like kind of like particle physics where they keep blasting a fucking atom and all they're finding is it goes comes into even more fucking pieces do you know what i mean yeah so oh look we'll, we'll call them quarks let's blast the quark you know it's like <laughs> what fucking for it's just going to be another million pieces and you're going to call it something else so yeah so it, that's the kind of thing so it's, she kind of blasted this child for so long it's, it, it, it's kind of psyche that uh, the, the, these five elements kind of appear within the subconsciousness that dark Knight actually uh that, that actually sort of aid dark Knight. and this is towards like the middle and the end of the book uh, and they are representations of the child, uh, in, in, and the, the representations are a guru, a soldier, a, sh- a shaman or a shaman, uh, a miner, and a, and a fool. Uh, and they are characters within the uh, within the actual story itself. And this is about that time where uh, Dark Nut kind of meets this crazy band of motherfuckers. There you go. 
perfectly described. Let's do it. I um, want to say hello to hello. Camp Jamae has joined us. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome aboard. And this is MS8, the Elemental 5. Let's do it right now. And we'll see you back here shortly. Enjoy. One, two, three, four, five. Elements of a lonely child and a broken mind. Be kind. Be cruel, but like a loop of the darkest night. Mankind, seven, six, got halo, pride, and bind. Subconsciousness can care less for the mothership with an element five rooms tied. Moon's tied. Now we're diving deep in the soul to the nucleus with a big band show with a great big bowl of soma. Brain stems and sends, brain stems and sends, SMS and OS, OS, locate the soul on a HMS out victory. Flat our flat, we come for the green, her land, her dreams, we scan from an eerie, evil screen, we're a team with five elements, we're alive, complete machine, automaton. You got that wrong when you make things here too long, can see his soul in a song, then we go all along like a maze. Now these years, we're brave, gonna break your chains, invade your brain, make sure swipe the slate, element five, that motion eight, five claws on one hand. Bounce of fear from a shouting clan Root and virus time It takes to find ourselves Disclose our plan Two prints are an alien craft And stole from feet Cool dark is not in tandem We are dreams you made It seems so random Access your memories Element five through disease Mother shit is through no release For the lonely child is harmony Still this bitch in the muzzle Mother of cocktail Chinese person Save the world I'm a tremendous hustle Flex my vessel Flex my muscle Saboteurs in recess coins Spinning darts And the husk of calling Falling On the wings of an FM story From a blood red warning One, two, three, four, five Mother shit I'm here I'm alive with the darkest Not having a good Seven, six, I find lullaby Never have enough Mother shit Part eight Eight, our needles are the group Mutate to an open state Now let our pupil Student rates for the rent for the hate And then so five come rocking Knocking at your door Buddy popping Beat voice into the noise Hip hop in darkest Not on the decks Never stop it Mother shit Part eight We're locked in Ray Don't call Other world We're dropping Beat to the roof Sometimes you ride it Sound with me Like five of the five One, two, three, four, five Elemental nation Strive to provide With a dark nut And a broken heart Our patience will to survive With a lonely child All switched up All glitched up Lord of the flies And a witch hunt We go to the sky Can't take more more We're right for a fight Tooth and claw We move like a pamphlet Tumors raining down From the scroll From the sky And roll like cancer Can I have this done yet? Yeah. Can I go to the spots And stay like a doctor Doc and put my numbers On the canvas thunder Gonna make you wonder Darky stuff Feedback in noise Elemental fight Making noise Calling into the void Of the darky seat They passed the world For the boys Lonely child Feedback in tracks And the gun The sword and cracks Reached out Freeloaded hacks Feedback in tracks Five for three, two, one, elemental land I'm set in sun, the world was lost When the war was won, on a game of cards and a losing run I pull them out, I don't play dumb With a hand and a joker, I'm up my sleeve Is a fool that will deceive, receive his kingdom's come One, two, three, four, five I run a kingdom, built on the lines I'm a fool on the hill with a reptile Eyes got spies and the stars drill dots With a heart and joy, my surprise Gonna burn my kingdom, made of mash These kicks, we see some twice The scouts are sold, in the moonlight Scaves me, stole your eyes from the prize Yeah, rub shit, part eight with a dark He snuck on the five, went abstract Feet back, he trapped mankind. Elemental five, oh shit, part eight, all right. Who's time? Black for three, two, one, yeah. Blast off solar system, fast like a gun. We're coming home like a bullet, can't we run? Elemental five to the rising sun. love about all your tracks is I never know what I'm going to get. There's always a surprise and it just feels like I'm constantly surprised and that's really exciting about your music and what I loved in that clip too there really reminded me of this old Commodore 64 game, God I'm showing my age now, called The Last Ninja uh, and it was yes. like this weird yes, I know it. I know isometrical it. Yeah. 3D thing with this ninja running. It so yeah, much yeah, reminded yeah. me of it man. I was like, I felt like I was back yeah. at school pirating video yeah. games. 
It's funny you should say that, actually, Jade. It's funny you should say that because uh, it's a, a mass. It's a big inspiration. Is like sort of eight bit video game, and specifically from that era. Uh, we're, we're similar ages, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was the it was both the Commodore sixty four and then what I owned as well, which was the ZX uh, a Spectrum. Specky, mate. Yeah, a Specky, a Specky. You, you're yeah. not British Massive, without a Specky. <laughs> Absolutely no, no. It was a it was a shit machine, but there was a lot of innovative programmers that managed to get something out of it, and I and I love that kind of uh, working with those restrictions. Sometimes, if you get the keys to the kingdom, uh, you, you you're just too spoiled. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do. If you've got something that's like, well, can I get this fucking thing to work, uh, and, and and really see how 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 far you can go with it. And I take a lot from that actually doing doing the most you can with 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 little or poor tools almost you know uh to, to make something that's greater than the sum of its parts definitely that that kind of inspires me that kind of uh that kind of thing then programmers in the 80s were unbelievable for it unbelievable what they were doing um and yeah so i'm using kind of almost kind of a low tech low you know it's a 10 year old app on a sort of ipad 2 that i want at work you know, it, 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 it's just something that I've always used and uh, I haven't stopped using it. I'll probably use it till it falls over. I'm not particularly bothered about high fidelity or anything like that. It's just a means to create and I just try and push as much out of it as possible. Yeah, look, I totally agree with you. And I watch a lot of YouTube. I'm subscribed to a lot of YouTube channels on 8-bit video games. People who go to car boot sales in England and go and pick up old speckies and redo them. And, um, and I agree yeah, totally. Yeah, and yeah. the reason I watch a lot of stuff is for the same reason, because you can take a lot of inspiration from people who pull amazing things from very little. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We yeah, live yeah. in a world it's of like, plenty. Like the punk movement and garage movement and hip hop movement as well. They were doing the same thing. They were just taking like some, a bit of, bit of, it, it, the cheapest technology they could find yep. and making something out of it. I mean, it started off with two fucking turntables, you know, and just mixing up records together. Like Cool Herc in like the like, hip hop scene back in the, uh, back in the seventies in, in, in the Bronx, I think, I believe it was. So these little kind of cheap innovations actually bring about something that's sort of incredible. Uh, and that, that inspires me. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And you can sort of find examples of that sort of in the zeitgeist, sort of quite a lot of places. Yeah, well, because we, we live in a world of plenty where everything is disposable. And, you know, uh, Pete, yeah. Pete John says it on his, his channel. I, I say it all the time as well that, you know, we and you, you mentioned it before. We have the technology in our hands right here that, yeah, that yeah, yeah. The, the stuff that's in this did, wasn't even enough to put a man on the moon. You know, we could no, we, no, we no, could no, put no. twenty men on the moon with this this stuff, yeah, and, and instead right. yeah. people are sitting there like flicking through Facebook, and you just think, <laughs> you wasteful prick, what are you doing <laughs> with that? Like, you've spent a grand on that thing, and you and you and you're flicking through people's bullshit stories. Like, go and make something. Um, and and yeah. and, and again, like even it's on this easy. show, I, even on this, how to app on iOS, people, I, you know, we, I get it all the time, and many people who make music with iOS, whatever you're making with if it's not on a computer people look at you they look down at you and they like oh but i have a real studio and i'm like who gives a fuck the, the thing that makes ios cool for me is that there are limitations and i always have to find a way to work around it to yeah, get that's that right, quality you know yeah. and and yeah, it's yeah. it's the trouble it's the solving the issues to get there that's yeah, the yeah. exciting part is mm, that, that's, i always find it so when you solve an issue as well, I always find that actually you've solved it, but you've not solved it in the way that you thought you you was going to. Totally. You've come up with something completely unique and you've gone, fuck. And it's like one of them happy accidents. That happens quite a lot. But if you keep on having happy accidents, I, I think there's something in that, you know, it's because you're constantly experimenting. And that's 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 the juice for me sometimes when I'm creating. That, that, that moment you go, oh, fuck, where did that come from? Right, yeah, keep it safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't lose that. Uh, do you, stu do you still yeah, play yeah, video games now? Yeah. Are you still a video game head? Do you collect old old video games or is it just like... No, not really. Only, funny enough, that goes back to the Dark Knight thing. Every time there's a... I don't buy any video games and then all of a sudden fucking Nintendo release another Zelda game and I buy a whole console. Just <laughs> <laughs> fucking Zelda. You know, so I've got to switch it in a moment. I played Breath of the Wild for about fucking... I don't know, man. It was too long. 
I, I, t- I, t- I took a break from fucking uh, from music and that. Yeah, I was playing on that fucking game. It became my life. It was like, oh, I'm not ringing in sick today so I can play Breath of the Wild on the fucking computer. And it's like, no, come on, have a, have a fucking word of yourself, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, no, no is the answer. N- not really, but I did. I did a lot right until probably my mid-30s. Yeah, yeah, did. Yeah, always, always played a bit of a Nintendo head after the... Uh, Sort of uh, after the ZX, the glory ZX Spectrum years. <laughs> it can't be beaten, man. Like it, it's it's weird. I have a whole lot of like video games on Steam, all the modern stuff, and I start playing them, and I just end up going, "Oh, I can't be fucked." And I'll load up an emulation and go and play something from a Commodore sixty four, like Whizball yeah. on Commodore sixty four. Whizball, yeah. That, that yeah. game was so so before its time, man. It was so out there. And you know what? I think I think one of the things about Commodore sixty four that really excites me with music is the SID chip was way before its chip. time, man. The SID chip the was amazing. SID chip was a fuck. I, I've I've sampled the SID chip in a few of my songs actually. I I fucking love the the, uh, the Ocean Loaders specifically. Oh, beautiful I think stuff. Was, uh, Mon- Mon- Monty on the Run as well was a fucking amazing music too. Yeah, yeah, really, really good, really good. Um, so yeah, no, uh, Crazy Comets was just oh, that's a great one. Crazy Comets is another one as well. We're really showing our geekness here, by the way. Hey, this I'm shows good. all about geek, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love a bit of geek, and great I think stuff. I think what yeah, you mentioned, what you mentioned too, it really holds weight because uh, with the SID chip, like people really had to push hard to make these mu- yes. this music sound amazing, the same and they did, mm. and they they yeah. The, yeah. the Commodore music really stood above everything else, Amstrad and Specky, absolutely, uh, absolutely, because yeah. people pushed real hard. I think there's a guy named yeah. Rob 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 Hubbard, and not not the crazy, yeah, not the crazy right. one yeah. who started a cult, not him. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Dunn was another one, was yeah, it? yeah, Dunn, yeah, Hubbard, yeah, there, there was a few of them, weren't there? Some but, amazing so, yeah, musicians, yeah, yeah. 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 really. And, good. and the Commodore really 64 good. even used to come with a keyboard that would sit on top of the actual, like a piano keyboard yeah, that you could yeah, sit yeah, on top, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. Oh, I'm a geek, okay. great stuff, yeah, it's got a style of its own. I, I've, I've always been a little bit intoxicated by that, uh, by that sit chip, actually. I'm glad that we have that in common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a great, great sounding thing. It's a thing of beauty. Check it out, everyone. You know, I think I actually have a SID chip uh, emulator on my... Um, I think I've on? got one as well. Here it is here. Look at this. Let me bring it up. Uh, it's, it's, it's sideways. Yeah. Look at this. It is a SID chip tracker, Commodore 64, oh, and you can actually... Beautiful. You can load up all these games in here. Let's see if I can load up a track yeah. just... Qu- See, I'm looking sideways because for some reason it won't <laughs> sit the right way. But for you, it's showing the right way. But it's you just bit... want to show off the flow of your dreads, don't you, Dave? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, That's they flow classic. so nicely. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to load. I can't even remember how to load. Oh, here we go. Instruments, ex- exit. I can't even remember how to load one up. I've been meaning to do a show on it, but I thought people would be really bored shitless by it. Like they probably are right now. I think now. they might be getting bored now. <laughs> yeah. They probably are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, who gives a shit? It's my show. You do what you want. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what that's it's all right. about. I, I want to ask this. What pisses you off? Oh, wow. Like, a really broad question. Yeah, like, man. Is there, some, is there something that really grinds your gears? Because, you know, I, I listen to some of your music and it, it comes across like, not angry, but that you've got purpose. No. You've got real purpose yeah. behind your songs. Is, yeah, is there some, yeah. are, there, are there things out there just in the world that just get on your goat and help you create? Um, help me create. Uh, if I was to, like, if things pissed me off, I wouldn't create. Really? I think, I, yeah, yeah. I I can make angry music. I have made ang- plenty of angry music. But yeah, I suppose it's channeled, of course. And I don't want to be too explicit as well. I, I don't want to sort of talk about actual sort of causes and wars that are being fought at the moment. I've done it a couple of times and I feel very uncomfortable with it, actually. Right. I'd rather, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm non-confrontational, to be honest with you. Um, I, you know, even though my music's spiky and there's a kind of like a, this. I think I've, I've actually thought it's not anger. It's more like sassiness, I suppose, and sort yeah. of being sarcastic at the whole fucking thing. Uh, uh, to sort of casting a right eye on, 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 on it as opposed to sort of like 
putting my flag in the sand and saying, I am this, because I think it's too fucking hard. I think the sand's just shifting the world all the fucking time. Um, and I don't want to fucking tie my flag to any particular mast. Things that do particularly piss me off is just the, the fact that things are just generally unfair, and we all feel that. Racism fucks me off. That really fucks me off. Uh, there's plenty of things that fuck me off, but I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking put them into my music. Right. I, I want to leave because this concept actually, I can put it in if I want, uh, and and it's it like I say, it's so open ended. But it's like when if I'm going to if I'm being entertained, for instance, I, I'm not going to watch the news. You know, I'm going to watch fucking Lord of the Rings or or yeah. Star Wars or take me to a fantasy place, please. Take me away from this world. Don't just sort of embroil me with you know like a documentary where really you're just being sort of fed an opinion and i always believe that if you know any the things that piss people off obviously things like the supply chain covid you know i could go into all the fucking depressing things that are fucking shit with the world you know hyperinflation blah blah i'm fucking very aware of what is going on but i think just sort of like needlessly sort of saying things like i'm going to bring awareness to this you, you know if you're not fucking aware of it what the fuck are you <laughs> fucking doing you know, like, jesus christ you know, it's a well, 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 but, but I, I like to compartmentalise stuff. So kind of like, yeah, I have a lot of AKAs with my music. So this thing's for, I'm going to do a song about animal cruelty. But I, that's, that's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But, sure. That's if, a good example. And that's if you want that, example. go listen over there. But the rest of it's not going to yeah, be like yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah, Sure. Yeah, I, I just find it interesting. Like this... I, think I, did, I did a song about, like, the Ukraine, um, and it weren't like, it certainly was not Let's Fucking Light a Candle. It, it was more about, like, the kind of, yeah. It was more like about the kind of like the, the the kind of middle class social media reaction to sort of like you know we're with you when you're not you know you've just you're not are you you know fucking yeah. of course you're fucking you know um, <laughs> so so yeah so but and I felt uncomfortable with that so um, you know then I thought well is that a little bit too much you know they're only just saying you know they're not sort of, but at the same time it's just I, yeah. I, I tried to keep it out. I've done it a couple of times. I've wrote a, a punk song about Mr. Putin, but that ended up more of a, like a comedy punk song in a way, you know, because I didn't want to fucking, I didn't want him to come after me, basically. <laughs> well, he's a funny kind of character, really. So he's a bit fucking like, no, move on, move on, please move on. He's a please bit like start, Mr. I Bean mean, with murder, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my pet hates this guy. Up yours, wolf moralist. Well, here we go. We'll yeah. see who I cancels. To, I had to Ooh. throw him in once. I had to throw him in <laughs> once. He, he, he's like the Joker for me. That too. Uh, let's play another song. Uh, speaking of, let's let's do something a bit higher. And speaking of segways, this is flying high. Do you want to tell us a little yes. bit about this track? Yeah, I've done a. Um, I've done three collections. Of, I'm about to finish my third collection of like purely kind of like adrenaline fueled guitar music because you know I was really into the grunge scene when I was young. I'm really into heavy rock. Really into I like thrash metal. My missus loves Pantera. Uh, it was just I just wanted to make three rock albums. And there's a black album, there's a red album, and there's a blue album. I'm working on the blue album. No, black black album's called uh, Shadow Men. Uh, the red album's called Doom Girls. And the one I'm working at the moment is called The Blue Prince. And they do link into the story because I ain't told anyone this before. But here we go. These are the three albums that Cairo Jones believes that he wrote when he was a big rock star in Mothership World. <laughs> this is the heart's first three records. And this is how the Mothership duped Cairo into thinking that he was like a, a rock star. So he's the heart and he, his vanity uh, uh, sort of he implodes, basically. He implodes, his heart is broken, but this is prior to that. This is when he's a success in the glitch. Yeah, so this is one of his records from the record Blueprints. It's Flying High. Yeah. Nice, let's do it. We'll see you back here shortly. This is Flying High. Boom. Boom. Uh... I'm 
Again, another variation of your styles of music coming through. It just uh, and I love the selection you've picked for today. You've, you've done really well. You uh, and can I say also? Um, I just want to thank you too. You've you, normally, you know, I'm not saying and, and anyone else who's been on the show. I'm not targeting you, so don't take it this the wrong way. But when I reached out to you to come on the show and I send like the email out with all the info, you were so prompt with everything. You've just been so easy to work with as an artist. So thank you for that. It makes my life so much easier. It's, it's a very... No problem. I have to be efficient in my work, you see, and that spills over into my uh, in, in, into this kind of stuff. If I say yes to something, I'm fucking doing it, you know. It's, uh, it's no half-assed measures or, oh, I can't make it tonight because I can't... Because I can't be asked, you know. No, you commit to it, you do it. You do it properly. Absolutely. I really respect that. So thank you so much. Um, and... I want to, the last kind of stuff we'll touch on before closing out today, we've got a, a, about a 15 minutes kind of thing to go, um, is the apps that you use. So once you've got a drum beat behind or you've got an idea, uh, what music apps do you use to put these things out? Are there, mm. are there a few go-tos that you, you continuously use? Yeah, there's the, um, obviously um, I, I use the, uh, the Overdub app, on uh, which is an iOS app. Uh, it's not very good, like I said. It's very, uh, it's very minimal. It's just, it's literally just a digital sixteen track recorder. It does what a sixteen, an old sixteen track recorder does, but a digital version of it. The GUI looks like a sixteen track recorder. So you, 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 you're recording live in. That's this that one, isn't it? Has an impact. Let's have a little look. 
overdubbing. I don't think it is no. actually. Maybe it's not available anymore. I don't know. It was Ooh. so long ago that I bought it. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. yeah continue. Over- Sorry. I, I spoke. Yeah. Over. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So on that, I can have stems. Yeah. You know, I can have these stems, and I just record a a, a drum track. What I always do with the drum track, though, is that I might sort of put some extra fills in there. Uh, I will uh, maybe have parts that are pitched down, we can pitch up, see how they sound, you know, maybe change the tempo of it, maybe change the progression of it as well, uh, as long as it fits some kind of rule, because it has to fit a rule, yeah. because otherwise it, yeah, it just does. That's the bit that really needs to really fit the rules. Um, so, and then after that, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm recording a guitar out of a speaker directly into the app, right. you know, basically to rhythm guitar whatever um but then the interesting bit is the simps obviously the simp sound so i use samples as well so i will scour youtube i will scour records i will tv things a sound will happen on tv and i'm fucking out with my phone i'm like right i'm recording that shit you know, yeah cool yeah yeah so i'm always on the lookout i'm always you know it comes out like, hey let's get the uh the pens on the drains on the pipes outside <laughs> you know <laughs> you know let's go for that so sort of something like a uh, big inspiration of mine's apex twin you know that, that's that kind of uh sort of thing i really really dig you know yeah. it's uh it's that less you know less into into more kind of thing again um so yeah but i download uh android so i can use my phone as a synthesizer so I've, there's one called V2. No, no, that's the, no, sorry. It's not called V2. It's called, I can't remember now. Oh, shit. I'd, fit, I'd have to go on my phone, but I'm, 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 on, using I'm, it. I'm on the wheel of my phone <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I, I know I know what the badge looks like, but I'm not going to explain it. So, but yeah, you can find loads of synthesizers anyway on, on, on with an Android phone on the Play Store. <clears throat> you just can. If you just type in the word fucking synthesizer, there's loads on there. Uh, and I've, I went through a trial and error basis on there. Yeah, some of them are really basic and sound quite shit, you know, uh, polyphonic almost. I don't really want that. Uh, but there's, there's, I can't remember the name of it. I'll, I'll, I'll send it over to you sometime. Uh, it, it, it's really quite, quite excellent. Hard to use because obviously you're on a small phone. It's not like a nice big keyboard. Yeah, yeah. But I also use this. I also use this. Now, this is a kid's keyboard. Nice. That is, that is a kid's fucking keyboard. Yeah? A, ya- a Yamaha. A Yamaha fucking... Uh, let's have a look. A Voice Bank PSS270. Nice. Um, and what I do with this is I use a lot of my bass tones on this, actually. So I actually feed it into the app over the drum beat. But what I do is I pitch it down. On the app so the app acts like a like an old 16 track or an eight track recorder that means i can pitch down so i pitch down 50 percent, and all of a sudden i've got synth bass yeah 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 yeah. so that's how i work that one yeah so uh yeah it's a sort of a variety of samples my own sort of musicality um and and, uh, that's how i kind of build a track yeah for sure i find it interesting because you know uh from being an iOS person myself, and you know this channel is iOS, it's it, I see a lot of people who use Android complaining, saying you know they wish that Android uh, was more geared to make music. I mean, there's you know there's there's lots of little apps on there and stuff. There's no GarageBand or anything like that. But it's it's so interesting to see that people are making stuff that is high quality, so and 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 original. So it's possible yeah. to do. So if you're watching this and you got an Android. Don't be afraid. Like, you know, you don't uh, you, like anything. You, you use what you have, man. You know, use what you have. It's really good, actually, because I think the next song coming up as well uh, is, is a really good example of that synthesizer sort of app that I'm talking about. In fact, I used a couple for the next song that will be coming up eventually. So that's quite that. That segs quite nicely in there, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's very heavy on the synthesizer element that we're talking about. So, yeah, I'm quite happy you spoke about that. Uh, was not done by design. And Russ has put it here the, too. Yeah. Russ has put here, think outside the box, and absolutely. And plus, absolutely. there's, there's BandLab as well. So Pete's, Pete Johns has been doing a whole special on BandLab as well, which is absolutely cross-platform. I don't know if you've, yeah. if you've seen BandLab. It's, it's, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. I mean, what, if it, when, once this thing fucking falls over, I'm going to have to get something else. I do realise that. But, um, you know... 
it costs me nothing. It costs me nothing to create. And so does BandLab, man. Have you should have a look at it. It's absolutely yeah, free. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. And you can you well, the the thing that you might find interesting about it is and and uh, head over to Pete Johns. He's been doing a whole bunch of shows on it over the last month and a bit. It it yeah. works on PC and then you can just create something on say you're on your iAndroid and then you can open it yeah. up on an iOS or on a PC. Right. It, it works on everything right. and it's completely free. And it's, right. it's pretty high tech. Like, you know, from, yeah, you'd, okay. you'd probably get into it and really yeah, good for samples. Yeah. So I, I would definitely look into that. Okay. Pete John's Studio Live today, he's been doing heaps so of shows it on it. Open source. It is open source then, yeah? Yeah, virtually open yeah, source. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you create yeah. an account and you can, I think there's an app for, you can use it in a browser or you can use the app. Okay. So it's really wide for, and it'd be perfect for your kind of stuff. And, and probably okay. really, uh, you know, bring your, your sound levels up to even better lift quality yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, if there's any one thing that has come out of this interview, I think looking into BandLab would be a thing that would really benefit you and make life a bit easier. Yeah, maybe. So but I like a hard life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't we it's all. It's how I'm built. <laughs> Don't we all. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're going to wrap it up now. I'm going to hit you with the last question I, I hit everybody with, um, which is it's a, it's a real hard one, man. It's you may oh, struggle no, with not this one. Not one of your open-ended questions, Jade. Honestly, Jeez, if Jade. someone was <laughs> if someone was considering becoming creative, when do you think's the best time to start? Oh man, man, no, that's, that's a fucking horrible question. <laughs> What kind of question is that? <laughs> I think it's I think it's fairly easy actually. <laughs> I think okay, okay. For me, we are all creative, right? We are all creative. We because you can see that in children. It's when you begin to lose that creativity by no, that's silly now. That's just games. You know, this is the real world and this is the practicalities of everything. Now you go to work and now you get a pension and all the rest of it. So uh, imagination is just for children or, or for, you know, whatever. Um, and so I believe that sort of happens around the teenage years. So I, I would say that um, to keep on creating, you need to find that childlike self. So I would say just keep creating from when you was a child. That's your best bet. If you just forget about all of that and then try to get back into it later on, I'm pretty sure it's going to be more difficult. I'm sure it's possible. I'm absolutely certain it's possible. Um, but it'll be more difficult, I think, to create. Uh, I think that's the thing with me. I was always the child playing playing with my toys, telling my brother to get out of my room because I know I was going to be snogging Princess Leah with Luke Skywalker or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the it's best. Be nice. it's, it's one of the yeah. best answers to that question I've ever had. Thank <laughs> so you. thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, and look, I want to thank you so very much for taking the time to come on the show and tell us a little bit about your world, how, your creativity, who you are. It's very much appreciated. I've been looking forward to this interview, uh, you know, for a while. So I know Ron. Ron reached out to me a little while ago. Was like, you really should have a glitch on the show. And I was like, dude, I'm I'm getting there. I've got a I've got a, a whole. <laughs> I, I I book people in advance, man. I'm Rost getting up. there. Yeah, I'm getting there. Up. And then yeah. he couldn't wait though, so he jumped in early. And I was like, oh damn, man. <laughs> Bloody Ron. He was too Ron ready for me. So <laughs> he, <laughs> it is what it is. He's always Ron ready. He's he born is. ready that man. Now, oh, folks, all of uh, Mark's stuff is down in down below. So go and subscribe to his channel. Please do that. And the other great thing about his channel too, which he mentioned, I'll bring this up uh, here, make sure that's muted and try and be professional here, is when you're on his page here, as he mentioned, all of his stuff is organized. And I love a YouTube channel that is like this, organized into playlists. So you can go and uh, have these. Uh, so you've got the Dark Nut Mothership. So you've got everything put into playlists. It's really good. Go and listen to it like that. Uh, that's how I had to listen to some stuff the other day. It was like, oh, man, you've curated. I love a bit of curation. It's always yes. sexy. It's fun. <laughs> yes. yes. Curation is, is the it sex. Is. It uh, is. It's the best bit. Yeah. Laura's put here as well, never lose your imagination. And I totally agree with that. Don't, you know, yes. if you've got kids, sure, embarrass the shit out of them. But uh, yes. never lose that that uh, childlike no, no. 
Even when you're 70 and shitting yourself, don't so do like it. So wonder, absolutely, still be curious. I think it's the curiosity, is it? It didn't kill the cat, everyone. It just turned you into a fucking cat, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> a cool cat. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Thomas, for putting Glitch's <laughs> channel there. So go and subscribe because he's, he releases music. Well, you release music, a lot of music, and that's really cool too. I love that you release it. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. More to come, more to come. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Just keeps them rolling. Yeah. Hopefully, Sons of Dark Knight. Yeah. So, what is your well, what is your roadmap for the for the coming end of the year? Even I won't go too far, you know, yeah. just for the end of the year. Yeah, I've got to finish this blue album. That's the first thing. Uh, I've almost done that now. I've got another one that I'll be doing this weekend. There probably another two this weekend, maybe, and I think I'll wrap that one up. And then I've got about ten to twelve electro tracks that I wanna I wanna put some sort of uh, put some nasty uh, lyrics against. Uh, and start releasing that. Um, so, yeah, I, I always say, oh, I'm going to take a break, and then I sort of go, oh, yeah, but what about this, this, and this? And <laughs> there is still stuff that I need to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah, so there's probably a good 15 tracks, like, in front of me at the moment that just all kind of need, like, sort of putting a cherry on top and stuff like that. So, yeah, it just keeps on just rolling out, basically, yeah. Nice one. We're going out now with lyrics in a glitch. Uh, the resurrection, a resurrection of Cairo Jones. You want to give us a little bit of a sell? Yes. Yeah, I'll give you a bit of sell on this. I hope people have been listening because uh, Dark Knight is the uh, is 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 the is the con uh, boy's uh, conscience. I uh, always touch my shoulders when I do that because that's a Catholic <laughs> thing as well. It's, it's a Catholic thing. That, oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's always conscience, and, uh, and and the heart is Cairo Jones, and this is this is about this is about Dark Nut now trying to revive the heart, so we you know we can wake up the lonely child and get the fuck out of here. So he's trying to revive the heart. He's trying to revive Cairo Jones. There you go. Awesome. We all need our hearts revived. Thank you all for being here today in the chat. You guys rock. Um, Thank you. What is happening? I'll, I'll just cover this. What's happening this weekend? <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I'll be back doing a uh, <laughs> doing an opening hour show. Here you go. I don't think I can do that. Right. I can do it here. There we go. So I'm doing a karaoke show this weekend. Karaoke, the wheel of karaoke with 60 songs. Yay. I've never Ooh. done that before. Ooh. So that should be a little bit of fun for you, you all. A bit of 60s music and whatever the wheel spins, I have to sing it. The horrible fucking <laughs> wheel. I hate it. The wheel of death. <laughs> all righty, guys. Let me just bring this track back up here. This is the uh, lyrics in a glitch, the resurrection of Cairo Jones. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark, for being here. Thank you all for being here today. And remember, do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make us better, and we all rise together. Enjoy. Enjoy. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Resurrect a broken heart and make you braver, raver. What are we doing with that? The state of this art is a matter of fact. A broken heart and he's found his back. That lining, it's the fool of man. We can't have that. 
Whoa, 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 did you just see that? 